Relations, lesson six, arithmetic sequences. Well, let's start with some definitions. First, what is a sequence? It is an ordered list of objects. What is an arithmetic sequence? Well, that's a sequence or ordered list of objects where the difference between consecutive terms, that's terms one right after the other, is a constant. What does this mean? It means we add or subtract the same amount to get to the next term. Next, common difference, or D. This is the difference between successive terms or the amount that we add or subtract to get to the next term. The final idea or definition we want to cover is the general term. Now, we use something called T to the N to represent this. And it is basically an expression for determining the value of a term which has already been simplified by entering the amount of the first term and the amount for the common difference. There is a formula that can be used for all arithmetic sequences. So we're going to use a situation to create the formula. Our situation is the following is the years in which the Winter Olympics was held. If we started at 2010, what would be the eighth term in the sequence? Now, Olympics are held every four years. So what did we do? We started with 2010. That would be considered our first term or t to the one. Our second term or t to the two, we would add a common difference, in this case, four. To get to our third term or t to the three, we would add four again giving us 2018. T of the four, our fourth term, would be 2022. T of the five, 2026. T of the six, 2030. T of the seven, 2034. And T of the eight is 2038. So our eighth term in the sequence would be 2038. This is an arithmetic sequence because we are adding or subtracting a common difference to get to the next term. This method of repeated adding, I call the jump method, where we add or subtract from the previous term to get to the next term. Now, this can work on small numbers, but it's really quite ineffective when the number of terms get larger. But we can use this to create our formula. We're going to do the math and the formula side by side to show you where these values come from. First, we start out with 2010. In our formula, how do we denote the first term? Well, that's t to the 1. Next, to get to the next term, we added 4. What was 4? 4 was our common difference, or d. How many times did we add 4 to get to our answer? Well, that was seven. Where did seven come from? Well, there are eight terms in the sequence, but the first term doesn't count. So if n was the number of terms in the sequence, we would have to subtract one from it. Finally, this all gave us an answer of 2038. So that would be the value of our n term or the term that we're looking for. So what was the term we were looking for, the n term, that was t to the n. So if you want to fill in the blanks on the side here, we can do that now. We started with 2010. Let's call this t to the 1. We added 4. Let's call this d. We repeated adding 4 seven times, which is the number of terms minus 1. And let's call the number of terms n. Finally, when we did this, it gave us the value of the n term, or t to the n. Well, first, identify which of the following is an arithmetic sequence. Explain. So how do we know if something's an arithmetic sequence? Well, we would be adding the same amount each time. So to go from 2 to 6, I would add 4. To go from 6 to 12, I would add 6. So I'm not adding the same amount each time. 
Therefore, this is not an arithmetic sequence. Your turn. Try B. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to try it. To go from 4 to 7, I add 3. To go from 7 to 10, I add 3. Therefore, based on what I've seen, this is an arithmetic sequence because we're adding the same amount to get to the next term. Number 2. Write the first four terms in the sequence. So, first of all, what do I know? Well, I know my first term, or t to the 1, is 3. So how do I get to the next term? Well, my common difference is 4, so I'm going to add 4, which gives me 7. So that's my second term. I add 4 again to get 11. That's my third term. And finally, I add 4 one last time to give me 15. That is my first four terms in the sequence. Your turn. Try B and I'll do it in a minute. Okay, for B, we started with 5. Now, this one's a little tricky because my common difference is negative 2, which means I'm going to subtract 2 each time. So 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And that should be the answer you should have gotten. Example 3. Determine the value of a particular term or finding t to the n. A. For the sequence, negative 4, 1, 6, 11, and so on, determine the tenth term in the sequence. So what does this mean? We're looking for something called t to the 10. So first thing is I write out my formula. Now I do my inventory. Although you don't have to do this, I recommend it. So first of all, t to the n is the value of the term I'm looking for. So what am I looking for? It is t to the 10. n is the number of terms. Well, how many terms do I have here? I am looking for the 10th term in the sequence. d, my common difference. What do I do to, what do I add or subtract to get to the next term? Well, from negative 4 to 1, I would add 5. From 1 to 6, I would add 5. Therefore, my common difference would be 5. t to the 1, or the value of my first term, is negative 4. So, I'm now ready to substitute in my values. t to the n is t to the 10, or the 10th term is what I'm looking for. t to the 1 is negative 4. The number of terms is 10, so I substitute 10 in for n, and my common difference is 5, so I substitute 5 in for d. Now, I have multiple operations here, therefore I'm going to have to follow bed mass. Bed mass says I do brackets before I do adding or multiplying, so I'm going to add or subtract 10 minus 1, which gives me 9. Now, I'm going to do multiplying before I do adding and subtracting. 9 times 5 is 45. Finally, I'm going to add these, which gives me negative 4 plus 45 is 41. So the tenth term in my sequence is 41. Stop the tape and try B. I'll do it in a moment. All right, for B, we start out with my formula. I'm now going to take my inventory. What do I know? t to the n, the term I'm looking for, is t to the 14. So I don't know that yet. My number of terms is 14. My common difference to go from 8 to 5, I would subtract 3. And finally, t to the 1, or my first term, would be 8. I'm now ready to substitute in my values and do my work. So. I substitute 8 in for t to the 1, 14 for n, and negative 3 for d. At this point, again, I've got to do what's inside my brackets first. 14 minus 1 is 13. Now I multiply that by negative 3 because I do multiplying before I do adding and subtracting. 8 plus negative 39 is negative 31. Therefore, my 14th term in the sequence is negative 41, 31, negative 31. Example number four, determining the number of terms. So we are working backwards to find n. 
Again, I start by writing out my formula and I'm ready to do my inventory. Now, here's how this is different. T to the N or the value of the N term, I'm already given. My final term is 87. N is what I don't know. I don't know how many terms there are in the sequence. So D, what do I add or subtract to get from one term to the next? Well, to go from three to seven, I add four. To go from seven to 11, I add four. And finally, T to the one or my first term is three. I now have one unknown, so I can substitute this into my formula and work backwards to find n. T to the n, or my the value I'm looking for, or at the n value is 87. T to the one, or my first term is three. N is what I'm trying to find, and my common difference is four. At this point, I need to work backwards to isolate for n. Now, as long as n is in the bracket, I cannot isolate it. Therefore, I've got to get it outside of the bracket. How do I do this? I do the distributive law and multiply 4 by both terms inside the bracket. So 4 times n is 4n. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. At this point, I'm now going to combine my like terms. 3 plus negative 4 is going to be negative 1. So I now have 87 is equal to 4n minus 1. I need to isolate for n, which means I've got to get rid of 4 and negative 1. So what is negative 1 doing to n? It is subtracting, so I'm going to add 1 to both sides, giving me 88 is equal to 4n. I now need to get rid of the 4. The 4 is multiplying by n, so the opposite of multiplying is to divide both sides by 4, giving me an answer of the number of terms is 22, or 87 is the 22nd term in this sequence. All right, your turn. Try B. All right, so you should have started out by writing out your formula and taken your inventory. You should have gotten t to the n is negative 28, or the value of the n term is negative 28. n, we do not know. The common difference to go from 12 to 10 is we subtract 2. And t to the 1, or my first term, is 12. I'm now ready to substitute in my values and find my answer. So I start out by substituting negative 21, 28 for t to the n. 12 for t to the 1, and negative 2 for d. Again, I now need to get rid of my brackets by multiplying everything inside the bracket by negative 2. I now combine my like terms to get negative 28 is equal to negative 2n plus 14. I need to isolate for n, so I've got to get rid of positive 14. The opposite of adding 14 would be to subtract 14, leaving me with negative 42 equals negative 2n. Negative 2 is being multiplied by n, so to get rid of it, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2, leaving me with the number of terms is 21, or negative 28 is the 21st term in this sequence.